Hi folks, welcome to thepreparedhomestead.com. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. You know, I often get accused of, of fear-mongering. Um, even though I I do try to, to tone it down and to, to not be part of that that thing that, that just spreads fear around. Um, I, I, I try not to sensationalize things. I try to bring things in kind of a, a logic, <clears throat> you know, some rationality, uh, s some understanding of, of what's going on, but yet not yeah, crazy. This video may not be one of those. Um, there is an urgency. If, if you haven't figured it out already, there is an urgency to get yourselves prepared. Um, that, that time is running short, folks. And I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that I am completely incorrect. And a year from now, we'll be sitting here talking about the new president that's getting ready to take office or um, the the president that's in office that's going to continue in office or whatever. Uh, I, I hope that we're sitting here talking about how that war in Europe in the Middle East just kind of fizzled out. And, you know, we should still prepare, but man, the economy's doing great. I I, I hope that I can sit here and talk about how the supply chains are doing better and that the banking is doing better and that it seems like we're further off than expected for a digital currency and some global technocratic takeover of AI and, and Big Brother. I, I hope that I can sit here a year from now and say that all of this woke, godless, anti-family junk that's been spread around is seeming to die off and and we're we're making a shift back to traditional conservative biblical values. I hope that I can do that. But I don't think that that's what's going to happen. I do believe that there is an urgency for us to to take things serious and to get prepared because I think that that time is becoming more and more of a of a rare commodity. To get ready, I, I think it is it is becoming more and more imminent. Now, that's a relative term. I get it. Imminent could mean tomorrow, next week, <clears throat> by spring, by summer, by the election, by the end of next year, five years from now. Um, I don't have a timeline, but I do see that that things are transpiring pretty quickly. You can't have millions and millions of illegals pouring over the country's borders um, and then saying that they're not illegal and giving them pretty much all the benefits and rights that, that any one of us has. You can't have just the constant drumbeat for some type of war or, or a bigger war. You can't have... Uh, the constant destruction of our currency and of our economy and, and of our way of life and, and, and traditions and morals and values and then not see that things are getting worse. I saw something the other day, and of course, I don't know how you could come up with a, a specific number of this, but I did my own little research, and it seems to be mostly true. Uh, based on the amount of children born in the United States in 2023, there's approximately been three illegals cross the border for every one child born in the United States. We can have pretty solid numbers on on births, but the numbers of illegals is that's a little, you know, not quite solid. But but based on what we can determine, that seems to be mostly the case. So three illegals crossing the border and coming into this country for every one child being born. You, you can't have that kind of stuff continuing to happen, folks. You can't have the fact that uh, a lot of the people that are coming across the border are Middle Eastern um, and, and have very <laughs> negative ideas of the United States. You cannot have um, a lot of illegals coming across the border from adversarial states like China and not think that something is up. Um, I was watching a, a little video the other day um, of a 
reporter that's kind of been on the boots on the ground kind of thing with a lot of the illegals. He's he's at the border at times. He's gone to Chicago and New York where they send a lot of them to um, these, these, you know, different facilities and they, they house them for a while. And one of the things that he said he noticed is that most of the people that he's talked to, they, they have kind of a disdain for the United States. They, they, have, they have no respect or no desire to be an American. And I've said that for a while. We can't have these kinds of problems, folks. We can't have these kinds of problems that continue to, to build and to expand and to get worse and, and to, to build momentum without saying that time is, is drawing short that we are very possibly on the verge of things just kind of falling off the cliff, that it's kind of like that camel, you know, the straw that breaks its back. We're, we're getting to that point that at some point in this little game that we're in, there's going to be that straw and it's going to break the camel's back and things are going to fall apart. Now, will it be immediate and overnight? It's probably not. Um, it could, probably not, though but it will continue to exacerbate and to get worse and to just just fall apart, folks. I don't see how any rational thinking, open-minded person can see all of this stuff that's going on and not realize it. And so I guess my message to you today, for those of you that will watch this, is that, yeah, things are getting bad. And I'm not saying that to terrify any of you. I don't want you to to go into a panic and start worrying that, oh my goodness, I don't have what I need. I'm not living where I want to live. I'm all alone. What am I supposed to do? That's not the point. The point is, is to be aware that these things are happening and to start and continue to get yourselves ready. Now, that's going to be different for everyone. I get it. Some of you are going to sit there and say, well, I, I'm I'm not in anywhere near a place that I want to be. And I don't see how I could get there. Don't let that kind of thought take over. Don't let yourselves be discouraged and to fall into this, this, this pit of fear. We can overcome this. Maybe not as a nation, but we can overcome this as individuals and we can be prepared for this if we only try. You see, most people don't prepare at all. And so even a, a little bit of preparedness will, will put you head and shoulders above everyone else. Um, I don't know how it's gonna, all going to turn out. I don't know how it's all going to, to play out. There's, there's, there's all kinds of rumors and th national threats of, of all these various acts. There's these movies that's been coming out or scheduled to come out that seems to be that they're foretelling the future. Uh, there's there's legal actions being taken in various states that seem like they're probably starting the, the first shots of a potential civil war. All of this stuff is happening. We have, to, we have to keep our wits about us. We have to not allow ourselves to kind of lose track of what's going on and what we're supposed to be doing. That's part of the objective of the ones running the show. They hope that most everyone is just not going to be prepared. They hope that they're going to be caught off guard, and they hope that they're going to just fall apart and run to them for help. And that's really the biggest thing of preparedness, is getting yourself in a place and a mindset and a position that you don't have to go run to the authorities for help. We need to take these things serious. Is every single one of them the end of the world? Of course not. But when you start putting the picture together, when you start placing each one of those puzzle pieces together, it starts to paint a pretty ugly picture of a future for this country. And I believe it's all being orchestrated. I think most of you understand that also. So we need to, we need to take things serious and understand that the next weeks and months could be a little crazy. Maybe not, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope they won't be, but they could be. And we need to be getting our houses in order, folks. I, that's going to look different for everyone. Yes, prep up, stock up, train up. If you're not where you're, you need to be living, do your best to get out. It's not as hard as you think. Most of you that are just resistant will probably not do so. And so your plans just need to be how to shelter in place 
and to ride out the storm where you're at. And that's also going to depend on where you're at too. But either way, you need to be making plans because when all this starts falling apart, when it gets to the point that you can't go out in public because there's violence everywhere and there's protests and there's there's all of these various things going on that makes it even dangerous just to go to the grocery store, well, what are you going to do? And that's why you should have a plan. You need to be prepping up, folks. We don't have much longer, I don't think. If you just look at how things are transpiring, it's not good. And it's only getting worse. That's not fear-mongering. That's just stating a fact. Folks, get your houses in order today and prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.